in Sri Lanka. Invading armies were laying waste to the King Gohasiva's kingdom of Kalinga. Facing certain defeat and knowing his death was imminent, the king entrusted the care of the sacred relic onto the hands of his beloved daughter, the Princess Hemamala, and her husband, Prince Dantha. He tasked them with taking the relic safely to Lanka. According to ancient chronicles, the couple disguised them as Brahmins in order to make the perilous journey without being detected by enemies. It is said that the princess concealed the casket containing the tooth relic in her hair. Boarding a ship at the port of Kamalitti, they disembarked at the port of Lanka Patana. Then, they made their way to the kingdom's capital, Anuradhapura. At the time, the Anuradhapura kingdom was ruled by Kirtisri Megavanna, also known as Kitsiri Mevan. The king was overjoyed to learn of the arrival of the sacred tooth relic and had it brought to Anuradhapura in a grand procession. The relic was thereafter placed inside a casket adorned with crystals and gems and taken to a beautiful palace. King Kitsiri Mevan also decreed that the tooth relic be venerated and worshipped. These decrees were also followed by subsequent kings. The palace in Anuradhapura, where the sacred tooth relic was housed in, was known as Dhamma Chakkagir. It had been built during the rule of King Devanampiya Tissa. Before it was placed in this palace, the tooth relic had been briefly housed at a temple known as Megagiri. While Princess Hemamala and Prince Danta awaited the arrival of King Kitsiri Mevan, this temple is thought to be present-day Isurumuni Vihara. Once every year, the casket containing the tooth relic was brought in procession from Dhamma Chakkagir to the Abeyagiri Vihara. This procession is believed to be the first ever Dalada Perahara in history. The tooth relic, which was thus taken in procession, was kept at the Abeyagiri Vihara for a period of three months. However, Sri Lanka's Perahara traditions date back even further, from the time that Jayashri Mahabodhi was brought to the country. The great chronicle Mahavangsa records that the branch of the bow tree was brought in a grand procession from Dambakula Patuna to Anuradhapura, with the whole part being brightly decorated on either side. From the day it was planted at Mahameuna in Anuradhapura, there have been Piraharas in its honour. This Pirahara has been conducted as a puja asking for timely rains. This Pirahara tradition, which grew out of the farming lifestyle, of the local population developed even further with the arrival of the sacred tooth relic. The kings who succeeded King Kitsiri Mevan from Jetta Tissa II, Buddha Dasa, Upatissa II and Mahanama up until Mahinda V who all ruled from the Anuradhapura kingdom considered it their solemn duty to safeguard the sacred tooth relic and conduct religious rituals in its honour. From the earliest days of its arrival, there are reports of the miraculous power of the sacred tooth relic. One such example of these recorded miracles occurred during the reign of King Buddha Dasa. When the country was beset by a terrible famine, on the advice of the monks, the king observed Sil along with all other citizens. Had the monks chant Pirit and engaged in ritual honouring, the tooth relic. These were done to appeal the tooth relic to bring an end to the famine. According to the chronicles, in answer to these prayers, 
heavy rains fell upon the country, ending the famine and bringing health and happiness to the people once more. However, with the passage of time, the Anuradhapura kingdom came to be threatened by foreign invaders. During the reign of King Mahinda V, even his Velakkara army, which was comprised of Tamil mercenaries, rebelled against him. This forced the king to flee to the kingdom of Ruhuna. Taking advantage of the chaotic situation in the country, the Chola emperor Raja Raja invaded Lanka. He conquered the entire Anuradhapura kingdom and many other parts of the country. King Mahinda II was seized by his force and it is said that he died a prisoner of the Chola emperor. The country was thus plunged into a period of anarchy and there are no records of the sacred tooth relic during this time. It is likely that this is due to the Buddhist monks keeping the relic hidden to safeguard it during this turbulent period in the country's history. <laughs>